scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Call him King of Kings. Call him Lord of Lords. Rose of Sharon. The Lion of the tribe of Judah. Go ahead and bless him. Saliba kaparandos kalibre ke baratos kieta. Eba la shabrem barsia pa katapra kate balatos. Connecting from across the globe, go ahead, give him praise. Abuja, Zaria, UK, Canada, Koinonia Global. Let's lift up sounds of worship. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, let the name of the Lord be praised. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. One generation will declare your praise to another. You are exalted, you are lifted, you are magnified. Even in our midst, blessed be the name of Jesus. Hosanna to the King of Kings. For in Jesus' matchless name we pray. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. You're going to be praying one prayer and then we'll be seated. Father, give me an encounter this morning. Give me an encounter by your spirit. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Give me an encounter by your spirit. Give me an encounter by your spirit. Give me an encounter by your spirit. An encounter that brings me liberty. An encounter that moves me forward. Are you praying? The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. He says and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. There is liberty. Someone lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Liberty. Liberty by the Spirit of the Lord. In Jesus' victorious name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will speak to us. We have come to be lifted. We have come to be transformed. We have come to make progress in the spirit and to make progress in destiny. And we pray in the name of Jesus that today will be a day of visitation for someone. Today will be a day of solutions for someone. Today will be a day of answers for someone. Today will be a day of arrival for someone in the name of Jesus. Be glorified in our midst, for in Jesus' name we pray. Give Jesus a big hand clap and please be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you care, you can look to your neighbor right and left and tell them good. What is this now? Afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, U.S. Good evening, Abuja. Good evening, U.K. Good afternoon, Canada. Good day, global. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We're honored to be hosting the first Koinonia Sunday service. <laughs> Hallelujah. Koinonia US, let the nations know you are a good host. Let the nations know that the United States can host God. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to thank all who are connecting across the globe. Thank you for being part of our Sunday service. The Lord will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Are you ready for the word? Amen. I'm teaching this day on the subject more than conquerors. More than conquerors. Romans chapter 8 and verse 37. I want to show you in this service the principles that help an individual to walk in unquestionable dominion. Unquestionable dominion. Unquestionable dominion. And so let me your attention. Be ready to listen, learn, and write. Let's start off with 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. Paul was speaking to his son in the gospel, Timothy. And he had this to say. He gave us a framework of the believer's progression. The Bible says, Who desires all men? I prefer KJV. Media, if we can have KJV, that's fine. Otherwise, I'm still content. Who desires all men to be saved? All men to be saved and then to come unto the knowledge of the truth. So follow carefully. Paul is articulating God's desire for all men. And he says in order of spiritual priority, God desires all men. Someone shout all men. Amen. That includes your relatives, your family members, your neighbor, your colleagues in office. He desires all men to be saved. And then, like you have learned, in addition to that initial salvation experience, to come onto the knowledge of the truth. So it is possible that you are saved, like we learned during the conference, and I'll walk you through that illustration that I gave during the conference again. He desires that all men be saved. The moment you encounter the God of the Bible at salvation, it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. The Bible says there is a journey. So the initial salvation of um, the believer is not all there is to be experienced in Christ. In fact, that gives you the trigger for your journey. Are we together? So most believers get saved and then they stop there. But the Bible lets us know that that is the beginning of a journey that leads to victory, dominion, power, and grace. He desires that all men be saved and then to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Second scripture. John chapter 8 and verse 32. It's a scripture that has blessed me. It's changed my life. It's changed this ministry. The Bible says, And you shall know the truth, not hear the truth. It starts by hearing the truth, but the victory that is captured in truth is released not just upon hearing it. You must know the truth. It says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Make you free. That truth, if it's truth indeed, it sustains the ability to cause anyone, any family, any individual to walk in liberty. Are you ready for the third scripture? Scripture number three, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. We'll consider four scriptures and then I'll begin to teach. 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 14. Here's what it says. Now thanks be to God. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph uh -huh, in Christ. KJV says who causes us always to triumph. And then he says and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge. This is powerful. So when you spray a perfume, you spray it from one point, but it diffuses all over the room. 
And so the Bible says God causes us to triumph and the fragrance of our triumph in Christ is spread abroad to everywhere and every person. Are we together? So God wants people to know of his work in your life. He wants people to know of the victories and triumph that your life is experiencing in Christ. May that be your testimony. Amen. Shout a believing amen. amen. And then for a final scripture, Romans 8 and verse 37. More than conquerors, principles for unquestionable dominion. The Bible says... Nay, or yet, as NKJV says, in all these things, I like how the Bible puts it, in all these things. Now, when you read contextually, he began the preceding verses by saying, what then shall separate us from the love of Christ? And he begins to list a number of possibilities that can tamper with the believer's confidence, famine, lack, etc. And then he says, yet or nay in all these things i like how he puts it it lists all the possible obstacles that can befall a believer on your journey to manifesting the life and the power of christ he says persecution can have an impact upon your confidence famine hunger and so on and so forth but then he says in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Very interesting scripture. It reveals two things from this scripture. Number one, that the believer can walk in dominion in spite of prevailing circumstances. I like the way Paul puts this. He does not ignore the factors that can tamper with your faith. He's honest enough to admit them and to articulate them that famine hunger persecution are we together yes so he does not ignore the fact that there are factors that sustain the ability to tamper with the believers confidence tamper with your joy tamper with your peace tamper with your sense of advancement hunger can have an effect on your faith famine persecution and so on and so forth but he says nay Yet, in spite of all these things, we are more than conquerors. So he tells us that the obstacles are not the reason why the believer should remain a defeated life. He acknowledges the presence of these prevailing obstacles. Listen carefully, but he tells you that in spite of it, there is a possibility to exert dominion and to rise even above any and every prevalent circumstance. Are you learning already? But then the second thing he reveals from this scripture is he tells you God's strategy for administering victory and dominion through Christ. Through Christ. Nay, he says, or yet, we are more than conquerors, but he says through Christ. That means the believer's dominion is derived from your relationship with Christ. Outside of your partnership with Christ, there is no possibility for being a more than a conqueror and walking in dominion. Are you learning already? So that we do not have any capacity in ourselves to walk in the experience of dominion outside of our partnership with Christ. If you're following me so far, shout a loud believing amen. amen. A quick recap, during the conference, I taught you a four-step progression to becoming, to your evolving as a believer. And let me remind you again, number one, we said the journey of every man by default starts with that individual as an unsaved person. Are you still with me? Unsaved person. In iniquity did my mother conceive me. I hope you understand that the sin problem is beyond an act. It is a nature in man. A nature that was derived from the original sin. Are we together? Yes. And so all men are born in that nature of sin. But then an opportunity is given to all men in Christ. Listen so that you gain spiritual intelligence. Every believer who is methodically mentored should be able to guide other believers to help them know their journey part time, per season, as far as their faith work is concerned. 
So you can diagnose immediately at what level any believer is. So, an unsaved person, how do you become saved? You don't become saved by wishing. This is elementary, but you need to learn. How do you become saved? There is an exact formula for salvation. And if you do not engage that formula, you are not saved. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 from verse 9 and 10, it says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And it says, With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Is the Greek word soteria. Liberty in its entirety. Are we together? Yes. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So when it has to do with receiving the life of God, you must believe with your heart. Not everything about Jesus translates to your salvation. You must believe he is Savior. You must believe he is Lord. You must believe he is King. Are we together? You must believe in his substitutionary sacrifice. His substitutionary sacrifice. Believing Jesus as Savior is wonderful. But what about the Savior? The Savior that died. Are we together? The Savior that rose again on the third day according to Scripture. Most believers are at a loss as to how unbelievers become believers. Coming to church does not make you saved. It can be a platform for you to be saved. But there is an exact information about Jesus you must believe with your heart and then verbalize it. Why verbalize it? Because God gave you a will and speaking is proof that you are using your will consciously. So when you acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you receive of his life. Then, according to scripture, a translation happens. Please look up. Now, that is a spiritual reality. Whilst that is happening, you're probably in front of the altar or maybe in your room. And you may not necessarily feel anything. For other believers, it could be a remarkable experience. They may cry, they may weep, you know. It comes with all kinds of impartations. But generally speaking, it's a spirit business. So, your mind may be unfruitful. It may be as ordinary as any other experience. However, the Bible says upon making that confession, if true and sincere, a translation happens. Say amen. amen. A translation happens from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. Next phase. You are now a believer. However, the Bible tells us that a believer can be an infant. Is that true? An infant in the spirit a babe in the spirit. One who can only be fed with milk. Paul expressed his frustration once and again that he visited certain cities he had come before. He expected maturity from the believers. But upon arriving there, he found out that they were still babes. They were still manifesting the feature of children. So a believer can remain a child. Unfortunately, growth in the spirit is not automatic it is engaged through light. So you can be in church for 10 years. You can grow biologically and yet remain a child spiritually. And there are many indices to measure maturity and childishness. One of it you find in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. When I was a child, remember? Yeah. I spake like a child. I understood like a child. So there are indices that show that a believer is a believer saved and yet an infant. Unfortunately, when you are an infant, Paul tells us that your results will differ not from one who is unsaved. An heir, he says, Galatians chapter 4, for as long as that heir is a child, he says he differeth not from a slave. That means the limitations of one who is outside Christ will largely be your limitation in spite of the fact that you are genuinely saved. Why? Because, listen now, the life we receive in Christ, the life we, re we, we receive in Christ, uh, the blessings that come with that life is released through knowledge. Did you get that? The blessings that come with the Zoe life is released through knowledge. So here's my phone. I would always give this instruction. This is my phone. And how many of you know that um, I believe this is a good phone? Am I right? Talk to me, Americans. All right. So if 
you gave me a gift of this phone. You gave me potential for efficiency. Am I right on that? Potential for efficiency. This phone, if used maximally, can work wonders. You can browse, you can do a lot of things. Are we together? But that you have this phone does not mean you will maximize the potentials that are wrapped up in this phone. It depends on having a practical, experiential knowledge on how to navigate your way through the phone. Did you know that I can receive this phone as a gift with all the potentials locked up in it and the only thing I'll do with this phone is to make a call? What am I doing? Underutilizing the potential. So someone meets me and I tell the person I've been struggling to send an email. And the person says, why? It should be so easy with this kind of gadget. My ignorance is putting me at the same position as someone who does not even have a phone. This is the lot of many believers. So it is true that they are saved. And somehow, because of poor mentorship largely, they believe that just because you are in Christ now, automatically the riches of the God life will find expression in spite of what you know. Not so. Not so. Not so. This is why Paul laboriously visited the churches once and again and his assignment was to mature them. He says, my little children of whom I travail up until now, until Christ be formed in you. If you are learning so far, say amen. So an unsaved believer becomes a believer through the new birth experience, confessing the Lordship of Jesus. The next phase becomes the journey of transformation. So you are a believer, but you are an immature believer, void of knowledge, meaning void of authority, void of knowledge. Your life is only full of potentials, but the experience that comes with the God life cannot be captured in your life. Now, I told you during the conference that from the point of your being saved, now a believer, God introduces three factors to your life. And please lend me your attention. Number one, he introduces the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. There is such a thing as an encounter with the person, the office of the Holy Spirit. Even though he plays a role in your being saved, but there is a separate ministry. Jesus himself was with the disciples already. But he said, when the spirit of truth is come, in addition to me, he will come. And when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. Are we learning? So the Holy Spirit is introduced to your life officially. Number two, the word of God, scripture. Romans chapter 20 and verse 32. And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to build you up. Are we together? And to give you an inheritance. Watch what Scripture does. It builds you up before delivering an inheritance. It doesn't deliver an inheritance. It builds you up and then it gives you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Those who are sanctified are those who are already saved. But among them, not everybody is built up and not everybody can walk in the experience of their inheritance. Are we together? I commend you to God. I commend you to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. John chapter 1 and verse 1 says, In the beginning, not from the beginning. In the beginning um, was the word and then he says the word was with God and then he says the word was God he says the same was with God in the beginning I like verse 3 it says all things were made by him and without him outside of the word was not anything made that was made all things were made by him the word are we together? And without the word, not anything, there was nothing made that was made. This is very powerful. Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says, verse 1, Now faith is the substance of the things hoped for. It calls it the evidence of things not seen. Are we still together? The next verse says, For by it the elders obtained a good report. When you get to verse 3, it puts it beautifully. It says, Through faith we understand that the walls, the aeons were framed by the word of God. The walls were framed by the word of God. Framed by the word of God. 
So when a believer wants to transition, God introduces the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number two, God introduces the word. These are the tools that sponsor transformation. Number three, God introduces that person to the ministry of a teaching priest. A teaching priest, a teaching priest, a teaching priest. Ephesians chapter 4, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. Some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. Why? For the equipping, the perfecting, the maturing of the saints for the work of the ministry. Are we together? That we be built until we become of the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ, not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive. Quoting from KJV. So my apologies if there are conflicts. It's already filed within my spirit. <laughs> Amen. Are we learning? Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 says, And I will give you pastors. Please put it up for us. Jeremiah 3, 15. The value of a teaching priest. And I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart. Shepherds according to my heart. And the Bible says they will feed you. They will feed you. They will feed you with knowledge and they will feed you with understanding. Are you receiving knowledge now? Shout amen. Are you receiving understanding now? So it says, I will give you. Every man of God serving the Lord, loving God's people is a gift. I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart. And they will feed you with knowledge. They will feed you with understanding. So the unbeliever becomes the believer through the new birth experience. The believer becomes matured, transformed through this tripartite combination of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God. Are we together? Prayer becomes a platform to engage these tripartite forces. Without the Word of God, without the Holy Spirit, without the ministry of the teaching priest, Prayer does not carry any power on its own. The power that is in prayer is because of the word of God. Without the word of God, prayer becomes a ritual like any other idol practice. What gives power to prayer is its word compliancy. Are we learning now? That means for your prayer life to be effective, you must be sound in scripture. In order of priority, Jesus went to the temple before he went to pray. Because your prayer should be full of that which is written. That's what makes your prayer effectual. The fervent, effectual prayer. Don't even tempt me to go to the area of prayer because most believers say a lot of things and wrap it up in the name of Jesus and believe that they have prayed. Unfortunately, the prayer ministry has rules of engagement. There is such a thing as praying amiss. There is such a thing as being double-minded as you ask. And the Bible already tells you, let that man not think he will receive anything from the Lord. Then it says, this is the confidence that we have in him, that when we ask anything, anything, but according to his will, he heareth us. Your confidence is in the fact that your prayer is word compliant, scripture based, consistent with the will of God. And where the will of God is already written from scripture, you pray the scripture with confidence. But where the will of God is uniquely vague to you concerning a matter, you pray in the spirit until a clear revelation of God's will, which will be consistent from scripture, comes. One of the benefits of praying in the spirit is to help you download the mind of God per concern, per issue. Are we together? There's nowhere written in scripture that you should relocate say from Dallas to Virginia it's not written here what if that's what you want to do you have to pray in the spirit and as you pray in the spirit the Holy Ghost has the unique ability to search the mind of God and to reveal to the saints that which is consistent with God's will you're learning so far say amen, amen. So when you get to the point of growth and maturity through transformation, I taught you, the next step becomes empowerment. 
And let me emphasize that the value of empowerment, the value of empowerment is that it comes upon a life that is transformed, a life that is matured, a life that is transformed, a life that is matured. And like you've heard me say, the oil will always reflect the size of the vessel carrying it. If the pot is small, the oil will look small. When she went to the prophet, the prophet said, no, the oil is not the issue. It's the container, the vessel carrying the oil is small, and so it makes the oil look small. He says, go and borrow vessels. Expand your capacity. Grow in the spirit. Borrow not a few. And the Bible says, as soon as she started expanding, the oil grew to match the vessels. And when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped. Now, I told you that once you become empowered by the Spirit, your name changes. It doesn't mean you are not a believer. You are still a believer, but there is an increase, an elevation, an upgrade in the Spirit. Okay? So the believer now transforms to be a witness. It is at the point of being a witness God can send you. He can send you to stand to defend his purposes doesn't matter whether in ministry as we know it or in business or in family career now you are beyond just a believer you are beyond just an infant you are beyond transformed you are beyond empowered he can send you and back you it is at that point you become truly useful to God's program if you followed everything shout amen, amen. right now but my concern this um, at this service is not just to serve the purposes of God, but I want to teach you that God wants you to live a victorious life whilst you serve him. Did you get that? God does not just want you to serve him living a defeated life. There are many believers who are serving the Lord sincerely, serving in church, living for Jesus, standing for Jesus, but the victory that is in Christ is hardly seen in their lives. This is my assignment, to show you that it is possible to serve God whilst manifesting unquestionable dominion. Unquestionable dominion unquestionable dominion that looks like a prophetic word for someone unquestionable dominion dominion in your relationships dominion in your finances dominion over your body are we together and there are principles so are you ready to learn mm. thank you Jesus blessed be the name of the Lord John chapter 15 and verse 8 most believers do not know why God insists that their lives bear fruit. Please look up. If you do not understand the intent behind God's insistence for your fruitfulness, you may not partner with him in making that happen. So we have several believers who the issue of fruitfulness and advancement and progress for many of them uh, they, they don't give it the passion and the aggression enough because they do not know that there is a dimension of God's glory that cannot be revealed until you bear fruits did you get that there is a dimension of the glory of God that cannot be revealed until you bear fruit So John chapter 15 and verse 8 says, Herein is my father glorified. Herein is my father glorified. By this is my father glorified. It says, when you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. KJV would tell us, Here is my, herein is my father glorified. When you bear much fruit. That means when you produce results. Please look at me. Spiritual results, financial results, when you make progress spiritually, when you advance in life and destiny and in the spirit, God is glorified. God is glorified. Did you get that? That means when you live a life void of sickness, void of um, um, all of these bodily infirmities, God is glorified. Say amen. amen. 
when you are not behind on your finances and you're making progress enough to take care of your family and the kingdom, God is glorified. Say amen. When you have quality relationships, your spouse, your children, and things are working relationally, God is glorified. When you are growing in your mind and scaling heights, even in your professional career, are we together? God is glorified. Someone shout, be glorified. Be glorified. One more time, say, be glorified. be glorified. So it's important for you to know that God's glory, the revelation of God's glory upon the earth, depends on the results produced by and from and through the saints. The, the glorification of the Christ upon the earth depends on the results that we produce. If we refuse to produce results, it will look like God lied. Our results bring validations to his claims. I hope this is making someone dissatisfied this morning. Ah, so he's glorified when I produce results, extraordinary results. He is glorified when I walk in dominion. He is glorified when I scale heights in business, I scale heights in ministry. That means if you were Satan, how would you stop the saints from bringing glory to God? By attacking their potential for productivity. Attacking their potential, it can be through, uh, by plaguing their health, by destroying their mind. You see the reason why we pray over the sick? It's beyond showing that a man is anointed. We are remedying something Satan is doing to God's creation. You see why we speak promotion, why we release the grace for favor? Because the higher you rise, look at me. How did Daniel bring glory to the name of the Lord? Because he stood out, result, he was exalted. And the more he was exalted, the Lord was glorified in Babylon. Did you see that now? When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were exalted, it brought great glory to the name of the Lord. How were God's people preserved in Egypt when Joseph was exalted? If Joseph were still a prisoner, most likely Jacob and all the sons would have died eventually because there was famine in the land. It was his influence that helped preserve them as a covenant people living in Egypt. Are we learning? So God is glorified when we produce results. John chapter 16 and verse 15. John 16 15 and verse 16, it says, you have not chosen me, John 16, 15, you have not chosen me, okay, I flipped it, John 15, 16, my apologies, 15, 16, John, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, the Bible says, and ordained you, someone say, I am ordained. The word ordained doesn't just mean to pour oil on you, it means to legitimize your operation. So that your function is not regarded as illegal. Are we together? If I fake a police badge right now and place it upon my chest and try to stop someone, when he, by investigation, if they discover that these were illegal, I've not been authorized, I've not been ordained to serve in Dallas as a policeman, the consequence is that I will go to jail. So if God does not legitimize your operation, the realm of the spirit will not respect your words. Yeah. So you will hear demons say, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. <laughs> but who are you? He didn't say, what are you saying? Who are you? The problem is not your words, your identity. Identify yourself before I take your words seriously. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, we are his workmanship. The Bible says, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. I hope you love the word of God in America. Yeah. I'm quoting a lot of scripture. That's how we grow. We don't grow by a lot of stories and jumping around. We grow by sitting to learn methodically. Yeah. Now, there's a place for excitement in church. Don't get me wrong, but um, no. You build stamina when you invest in the word. 
You rise from that experience and you are given a gift through transformation. The manifestation of that gift is what we call authority, exousia. Exousia is manifesting the power of God, authority on account of knowledge. On account of knowledge. Someone is rising right now. Because after this service, you will speak to principalities and powers. They didn't obey you last week, but sorry for them. Sorry for them. Because from this week, in the name that is above all names, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. You shall decree over families and it shall be established unto you. Hallelujah. Please sit. There's no superstition as far as the faith life is concerned. If you are bankrupt of knowledge, I think it was Dave who was speaking here and he said, the ignorant believer, he was quoting me, is also a defeated believer. You can be defeated even as a believer and many have been defeated. Unfortunately, many have been so defeated they live in that realm. But the Bible says the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. You don't arise because time has passed. Uh -uh. You arise because your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Amplified says, Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, Rise to a new light. Are we learning? May you be sound in scripture. For someone, by this teaching, God is shaking off a lot of laziness spiritually. Do I sound harsh? God is shaking off a lot of laziness spiritually. So that you can stay with the word and build stamina, build capacity in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. And so it's important for us to know that in understanding this concept of being more than conquerors, we must appreciate the fact that God's glory, the manifestation of it on earth, depends on our ability to produce results. Our ability to produce results. Our ability to produce results. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, the Bible says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. With great power, with great power, gave the apostles witness, evidence of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And it says, great grace was upon them all. With great power gave the apostles witness. So the apostles did not just announce that Jesus is risen, they gave witness to it. They gave witness to it. Are we together? In Acts chapter 8 from verse 5, the Bible says, Philip went down to Samaria and there he preached Christ unto the people and the Bible says they gave heed with one accord to the things that Philip spake, hearing and seeing. The miracles which he did. Hearing and seeing. Please look at me. You want to become light and salt. You want to manifest as a victorious believer. It is important people do not only hear what you have to say. They must see the evidence. The Bible says, oh, taste and see. Not just believe. There is an experience to our faith work. May that experience begin to speak in your life. That someone will look at your life and it would have changed like night and day. And you bring great glory to Jesus. Great glory to Jesus. Amen. So you must understand number one and appreciate the necessity for extraordinary results. You will not contend to walk in the experience of this more than conqueror dimension. You may not see the need to contend until you walk in unquestionable dominion for as long as you do not know that your being fruitful, your bearing fruit brings glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It gives perspective to your pursuit. So it's not just a mundane, carnal pursuit to be prosperous or to be promoted. You see that now? The moment you tie the revelation of God's glory to your pursuit, it ceases to be carnal. 
What makes it carnal is the fact that Christ and the revelation of Jesus is not represented in your pursuit. Please look up. Carnality has nothing to do with having or losing things. The purpose for which you have or lose them is what makes anything carnal. So if you are trusting God to be a multimillionaire, for instance, what makes that pursuit carnal or otherwise is how Christ will be revealed through that pursuit. If in your being wealthy and blessed, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ will have support from your wealth, the purposes of God's souls will be saved, then that pursuit ceases to be carnal. Are we together now? Yes. Carnality is not just defined as the coming or the going, the living of things. It is how much the revelation of Christ is tied to that pursuit. So you want to become a director, you want to become an entrepreneur, you want to become a great man of God. All of these pursuits in themselves are not wrong. But if on one end the pursuit leads to the glorification of self, that is now carnality. On the other hand, if it leads to the revelation and the glorification of the Christ, that is a spiritual pursuit. Is someone learning? I'm teaching you this so that you do not spare when it has to do with evolving to become your best self. You can connect that pursuit to the revelation of Christ and you are no longer afraid. I want to be my best. I want to give my best. I want Koinonia to be its best. Are we together? And I am not afraid to fire on four cylinders, all four cylinders. The reason is because at the end of it, it is not the revelation of self. So if God wants to anoint me, the more my answer will be yes, sir. If God wants to prosper me, the more my answer will be yes, sir. If God wants to multiply my influence, my answer will be yes, sir. The reason why I'm not afraid of receiving is because it will be used for his glory. Someone say, my results. my results. Come on, shout it. Say, my results, my results. will reveal Jesus. Will reveal. My results my will glorify Jesus. Results. One more time, say, my results, my results. will reveal Jesus. My results, my results. will glorify Jesus. Glorify. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is the foundational orientation that every believer needs to have. So it makes your pursuit to be mundane if it is not connected to this revelation or it makes your pursuit spiritual. Any activity that leads to the glorification of self alone from a spiritual standpoint is a total waste. Doesn't matter what it is. Have you heard of a man in the Bible called a rich fool? What did I call him? Rich fool. Now, foolishness and wealth should not go hand in hand because wealth is a product of wisdom. But here is someone combining something that should not be a rich fool. And why was he foolish? He was not foolish because he was wealthy. He was foolish because the purpose of the wealth was for self. He said, I will build bigger bands. When he built bigger bands, he said, my soul, find rest in this. And he said, no, you've lost the purpose. This day, your soul is demanded from you. How about another rich man in the Bible called Solomon, whose life was to glorify God at least for a major part of his life? How about a man called Joseph of Arimathea, who used his wealth and influence to buy the grave where Jesus would lay? And that was because of that grave, we can now say, oh grave, where is your sting? Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus because your heart is already set to reveal Jesus through your life. May there be no restriction to your rising. No restriction to your becoming. In the name of Jesus. My life changed when I realized that I could serve the purposes of God while walking in victory. Now whether you choose to be Abraham or Lazarus, at least two of them loved God. The problem was their condition. One could not really glorify God through their lives. The Bible says, now glorify the Lord with your life, your body, which is the Lord's. You can glorify God through your finances, glorify God through your growth. Most believers love Jesus, they serve Jesus, they intend to serve Jesus. But their lives and their results cannot attract people to Jesus. Because through their lives, they are selling a Jesus that the nations cannot receive. Did you get my point? 
Yes. Your life should be able to market Jesus in a way that the nations would desire him. And my assignment is number one, to help you see that God wants to get glory through your life. That as a believer, you must not just stop at revealing him. He wants you to be victorious whilst doing that. He wants your bills paid. He wants you to experience favor. How many of you were blessed by these testimonies already? <laughs> Hallelujah. So for you to know that God, the manifestation of his glory on earth in America, in Dallas, across North America, generally speaking, depends on your fruitfulness depends on your producing results in every area of your life. Can we consider the second point? The second point I want you to know and learn is that producing results, walking in dominion, living and manifesting that more than conqueror dimension depends on your knowledge of spiritual laws. Walking in victory, walking in the experience of dominion, please listen, depends on your knowledge, your thorough understanding of spiritual laws. Someone say spiritual laws. Spiritual. One more time, say spiritual laws. Spiritual. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are we still together? Who hath blessed us? Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. You're confessing the word of God and this translates to victory. So when I say you repeat after me, you do that with conviction. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. We have been blessed already. At what point were we blessed? When we received Jesus. Are we together? When we received Jesus, the life of God that was deposited into our spirits came with that blessing. But, but the experience of that blessing will not happen by default. It needs to be released on account of knowledge. And I'm showing you now that there are spiritual laws that govern dominion. There are spiritual laws that govern walking and living in the experience of victory. Many believers love God, but they are ignorant of the laws. Are we together? Operating this mic that I'm holding depends on laws. It is possible to be holding a very wonderful mic, but not know how to operate it. The Bible says, they know not, Psalm 82 from verse 5, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. It says, ye are gods. I have said, ye are gods and all of you, not some of you, are children of the Most High. But then it says, you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. The reason? Ignorance. My people, Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. You can be a victim of what you do not know. There are spiritual laws. For instance, please look up. How many of you have heard and seen the results from this grace called favor? Now you imagine a believer that does not even know such a possibility exists. You see that? That believer will live a very defeated life. Angry at God. Angry at God. Why, why is my life so hard? And then perhaps another one will hear a teaching on favor and with all due respect, hear something like favor is unmerited. No, that's not true. No, that's not true. Favor is in dimensions. Only one dimension of favor is unmerited. The favor that translates as saving grace. Every other dimension of favor is merited. It is programmed through knowledge. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15. Read it with me if you are a Christian and let that put that to rest. Because you see, what you believe affects the results you produce. Read with me if you can see it projected. I hope you do. Ready? One, two, read. 
One more time. One more time. Alright, so let's finish up. But the way of transgressors. Is that in your Bible? That hardship has an explanation. And favor, ease, has an explanation. So many well-intentioned people have all kinds of ideas, for instance, about the favor of God. How about speed? How many of you have heard that there is a grace called speed? That a man can actually receive acceleration in his life. Now you imagine a believer who is, is bankrupt of this knowledge, doesn't know... Thank you. Praise the Lord. Okay, so I have one here. Is that working? Test it. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say you love Jesus. Hallelujah. Say you love me. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so let's get to work. Are we learning now? So imagine with me two believers. Call this one brother A, call this one brother B. Are we learning? all saved but now this brother is ignorant of all of these things not knowing that your destiny depends on your engaging the word of God imagine the kind of life this believer will have not knowing there is such a thing called speed in the kingdom not knowing there is such a thing called favor in the kingdom in fact you imagine that this believer does not even know or believe that demonic attack is real unfortunately this man is going to pay the price for the rest of his life because the devil will make sure he keeps him thinking like that now you can find another believer who believes in the presence and the existence and the reality of Satan, but does not believe that victory over demons is real. He will still spend his life thinking about demons and fighting for the rest of his life. Look at another believer who's had the privilege to be methodically mentored. Engaging all these forces like you are learning, their results would not be the same. And the revelation of Jesus through their lives would not be the same. I wonder which of these three you are in this service now. There are people who are completely ignorant, very sincere, but ignorant. They knock doors and doors don't open because they don't even know how doors open. They don't have keys, they don't have relationships, they don't have the power to break the doors. Hmm. Are we together? There are many believers who say things like, I don't need any man, all I need is God. Well, if they are talking about the sovereignty of God, I understand what they are trying to say. But some of them mean, I don't need any man. Oh dear, you don't need any man? No. John chapter 5 and verse 7. The man who was at Bethesda. The Bible says when Jesus came and met him and said, Why are you in this condition? Would you be healed? He said, I have no man. Is that in your Bible? Not, I know where the solution is, but I have no man. And you've heard me say it, and let me say it for the first time here in the U.S., that all blessings come from God through man to man. Let's say it together. All blessings come from God through man. Your promotion comes from God through man. The keys to your house come from God through man. Your promotion letter will come from God through man. All attacks come from Satan through man to man. Wickedness comes from Satan through man. So whether it is God or Satan, men have always been midwives for pain. Listen, this orientation alone will make you respect spiritual laws like the law of honor. I'm sure many of you saw the photo where I went to just greet and honor Dr. Mike Modok, the law of honor. Because every time doors close, they close in response to dishonor. Dishonor to God, dishonor to men, dishonor to principles. Is someone learning now? So some of you have been angry, angry with God. Why is my life not changing? Here's why. You need to understand spiritual laws and then to obtain grace to engage them. This is how we walk in dominion. 
Things will work themselves one day, unfortunately. That's superstitious thinking. If your life is going to change, you will have to arise, take responsibility, obtain the enabling grace, content for knowledge, obtain the faith to act. Are we together? That means I can become another version of me. You, we're still reminiscing on the testimony of that, our gentleman. Yeah. He listened to the word. He listened to the word. What was he getting? Number one, transformation. Number two, the impartation that comes with every word. Because grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. You don't look for grace, you look for knowledge. With every dimension of knowledge you find, the grace component that empowers you to walk in that light is released. So if, say, you are not healed, looking for the grace for healing is a wrong way. You won't find it. Look for the word that brings you health. When you find that word, the grace connected to it. Graces are connected to revelations. Are we together now? You are looking for the grace for prosperity, for increase. You won't find it that way. Find the word. Find the principle connected to the increase of the saints. With that increase will come that grace. Are we together? Yes. So most believers are ignorant. This is what I've been driving at. That most believers are saved. But I'm telling you they are ignorant. Do you know? I, I would say this humorously to my people back home. That... When God connects you to a teaching priest that understands scripture alongside the grace to methodically show you the part of the spirit, you have been given a great advantage in life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is true. When God really wants to help a man, he shortens the distance between you and a teaching priest. He shortens the distance between you and a teaching priest. You imagine what you are learning now. You will step out of this place with a higher level of enlightenment. And you will be able to explain to another person that you're being angry with God. You're getting it wrong. There is a way the kingdom works. Are we together? Yes. There's a way the kingdom works. I'm not growing spiritually. Do you understand the forces that control spiritual growth? The force of consistent prayer. The, the force of the study of the word. Meditating upon that word and confessing it. The force of fellowship. Psalm 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell in unity. You cannot grow spiritually in isolation. You've got to be connected to a larger body of believers. So you receive both vertically and horizontally. You are receiving from God, but there is a sharing of graces among brethren. An individual who does not know that will not grow spiritually, even if you've been saved for 10 years. So with this understanding now, if someone comes to you and says, um, I want to grow spiritually, you're not going to beat about the bush. With mastery and understanding, you will tell him, submit yourself to the ministry of prayer consistently, strategically. And in doing so, don't pray like an unbeliever. Make sure your first assignment in the place of prayer is to find the scripture that supports the things you are saying. Don't just, listen, the, the disciples told Jesus, teach us to pray. The issue with them was not prayerlessness. It was prayer that was not effective. They noticed that every time Jesus prayed, there, there were results that followed his prayer. Are we together? Father, thank you for my life. But you see, America is not treating me well. And I don't know when you are going to attend to me. This, this, this thing is weighing on me. Because God is merciful. He's not a demon. He will still come with his compassion, but if you are to get results, you will have to find what the word says. Are we learning? What does the Bible say? Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to do and to observe all that I command you this day. Are we together? that all these blessings shall come upon you, overtake you, you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth. You wouldn't believe where I was when I saw this scripture, and I believed it. 
I believed it. That a man can be exalted by grace to a point where no nation sustains the ability to reject you, nor reject the investment of God upon your life. It doesn't work because of your personality. It works because of his integrity. Let me say it again. Results don't just happen because of your personality. It happens because of his integrity. Genesis 21 verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he has spoken. The Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. The Lord visited Sarah as he has said and did unto Sarah as he has spoken. God visits as he says. Are we together? He does as he's spoken. So if he has spoken great things concerning you, you have to know what he has said. If you do not know what he has said, you cannot engage it. This is beyond claiming scripture. I'm sorry to say this, but let me abuse your theology a bit. We are not given any assignment to claim scripture. You engage scripture. You don't get resolved by claiming. Now, don't, don't feel bad and don't go harassing any man of God, okay? Please. But that idea of just claiming, you can receive. That is true. But for results to work, you must engage it. The one who does the word is the one who receives results. It says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. Ever learning, the Bible says, but never coming unto the knowledge of the truth. So there are many believers who know I know, I know, but the results don't speak. You must obtain grace at this service to engage the word. Engage the word. If you've been told that effective prayer translates to power, don't just know it and archive it in your mind or on paper. Obtain grace to engage it. It is the person who actually prays that becomes powerful, not the person who knows that prayer produces power. The one who engages is the one who comes back. The Bible says, he that weepeth, bearing precious seeds. The one who actually bears the seeds and sows them is the one who will return rejoicing bring in the sheaves. If prayer produces power, then I must engage the prayer ministry consistently. Now, it is not something that happens mechanically. There is an engracing that empowers me. It's called the enabling grace. Are we together? But then the responsibility of submitting yourself to prayer is your business and you must engage. If understanding the word of God and engaging the word with power helps me to be enlightened and helps me to manifest dominion in experience. Then I must become a student of scripture. I must ward off anything that tries to kill my passion, my passion over the word. Because whatever that force is, it is fighting my destiny. Are we together? If corporate fellowship is a platform for growth, increased transference of graces, then I must reject everything that wants to fight my fellowshipping with believers. Are we together? The laws of the kingdom. Please listen to me. America is a good land. But to deliver the riches and the blessings resident within your nation to you, it will take beyond jumping and saying, I'm in America. You must engage the word of God. Do you know that there are people who are willing to favor you in this land? But until you, you contact the grace called favor and know how to engage it, you will pass your destiny helpers sometimes every day and yet they will not look to you with compassion. You've heard the testimony. I mean, you've heard it in the lady I was hearing her just staying in one place, greeting someone and then the person was willing to pay off her bills. No, people are not that kind. I can tell you. There is a grace that makes people behave that way. In the name of Jesus. Now please look at me. Every area in your life where you have not seen the glory of God revealed, I can tell you what is wrong. It is not necessarily 
a limitation from God's path. It is that you have not understood the laws of the spirit that govern manifesting that result. So for instance, most people are trusting God for increase in finances. And if I ask you, how do you expect to walk in the blessing? Maybe you are trusting God for a great job. Now that's wonderful. You're trusting God to scale your business. That's wonderful. But how does God prosper men? Just as, as, as an example, you'll be surprised how many believers do not even know. Someone will tell you, give, sow a seed, come and give apostle a seed, and go back and you'll prosper. Unfortunately, you'll be disappointed. <laughs> Let me say it up front. You will be disappointed if that's the only thing you do. Certainly, you'll be disappointed. Because when you want to access many rooms, you need many keys. Your home probably has many rooms and there are many keys. Just having the key to the living room may not open the door to the kitchen, the door to the restroom. You see that now? So giving is important, but it's only one of the many laws that govern increase. Diligence is one of it. The Bible says a diligent hand shall be made fat. The talk of the lips only pen, tend to penury. There are many believers who are givers, but they are not diligent. How about being valuable? Is there a man so discreet and wise that we may set over the affairs of Egypt and in one moment a diligent man, not just a spiritual man, a diligent man was exalted. How about relationships? And Lot went with him. And that was the reason why Lot prospered. Who are you going with? Jesus said, come, follow me, and I will make you. You are made by who you follow. These are the laws of increase. We're just doing a crash course here. Someone learning now. So there are many believers claiming increase, claiming increase, but unfortunately it may never happen. The talk of the lips only tends to penury. You have to know what the laws are and engage them. How about help? There are many people who do not have helpers. I will tell you why. It's not because of their personality. It's not even because of your background. There are three ways that help is administered to the saints in scripture. Number one, God helps men by granting them access to his mercy. The first way God shows you help, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her year the set time. I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy. Is that true? So God helps men and I hope you understand what the assignment of help is to make things possible and to make things easy. When you are helped by God is to this end that your life becomes possible, your life becomes easy. I hope I've not lost you. Let me know you are following me by shouting a believing amen. amen. The second way God helps men is through the gift of men. When God wants to help you, he introduces those we call destiny helpers. These are men anointed and ordained by God to hold your hands and help you cross certain rivers, jump through certain mountains. Are we together? Because no matter how great you are, you do not become great in isolation. You will always need the ministry of men. Jesus is on his way to Golgotha, and he's so weak, having bled so much, the Bible says he collapsed right there with the cross. Jesus, your Jesus, did not have the power to finish his assignment. As Jesus... Haven't prayed, haven't fasted, he still did not have the power to finish his assignment. If he died on the ground, he would not be called sin. Because cost is every man who hangs on a tree. He needed to die on a tree to be the curse. So they brought a man called Simon of Cyrene who helped him carry the cross to Golgotha. That's how Jesus finished his assignment. You can be prayerful, you can be anointed, you can be great, but a time will come in your life and your Christian experience, and for someone, you are in that season right now where you can't continue alone. So when God wants to show you help, the Bible says, the God of Jacob defend you. He says, send you help. God can send men help. If our dear sister was not helped, she probably would not be here today. Her bills would have overwhelmed her. The one who came to share her testimony, she was helped. Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. He says, whence cometh my help? I like what he says, my help, not our help. I don't know where yours come from, but my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the maker. I like that name, the maker. 
He makes finances. The maker. He makes destinies. The maker. Now, I, I, are you learning already? So, this is a believer who has been fortified by light. Your life cannot be ordinary. There's no superstition about walking in dominion. It's a, it's a product of laboring with the spirit to learn the secrets, the mysteries of the kingdom. And let me tell you, it's not a gift. You have to press line upon line, precept upon precept. Is someone getting challenged already? Now, you imagine the level of ignorance that many believers entertain. And then they admire the results of people who labor in the secret for light. No, the Bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned until unless he strives lawfully. Nobody wins the Olympic by mistake. No, no. You can get to the stadium by mistake. But everyone on that track has been vetted, approved, and the one who finally wins, he would tell you, I came to win. I knew I would win. Do you know you will win? Empty talk will only tend to penury. Penury here is not just in terms of finance. Decline in your Christian experience until you become frustrated. This is a lot of many believers. God is challenging you this morning and planting a holy dissatisfaction within your heart that after this meeting, you will rise up and tell yourself, in one month, my life must change. In one month, my life must change. My assignment is to release that prophetic word, but you must be angry enough and engage it. Listen, can I tell you, revelations create transitions. You can evolve. You can leave your former self with its weakness and limitations and move to a new level, a new level, a virgin dimension in the spirit. Arise, he says, shine, for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You rise when your light comes. You rise when your light comes. You contend for light. Find out the areas in your life and your Christian experience that is not working and be on a spiritual project. Damage ignorance. Damage ignorance. Fight ignorance like you fight demons. By the truth, some of you will need to get certain teachings your life is bankrupt of favor. Go and get that message. This grace called favor. Don't say I've listened to it. Perhaps you listen to it carelessly. Now after this teaching, you go and listen. Oh, so these are the keys. The keys that control favor. Number one, honor. Number two, value. Number three, relationships. Number four, you can pray favor-provoking prayers. Number five, there is the Esther anointing. I found the keys. You carry them and war with them war with them how about speed apostle i know that i i can enjoy speed but are you enjoying speed and then you listen to the message on speed and you learn there how that jacob came even though he was lying jacob came to his father isaac haven't been sent to get venison. He disguised as Esau. And the father said, how come you have returned so quickly? He said, because the Lord has brought it to me. Men can experience speed when God brings to you what others are looking for. Esther chapter 2 and verse 8. The Bible says that Esther was kept together with many other virgins. What was her edge? She was a village girl. There was no chance of meeting the king. There were many other ladies too who wanted to see him. But the Bible says, and Esther was brought unto the king's house. Uh -huh. And the custody of Haggai and all of that. Read verse 9. Verse 9. Esther chapter 2 and then verse 9. The Bible says, and the maiden pleased him. And she obtained kindness or favor from him. What was the proof? And he speedily gave her. Stop there. He did what? Speedily gave her. It's an expression of favor. When the favor of God is upon you, you can be given good things too late. Timing matters in receiving. He speedily gave her. You speedily received the job. He said, satisfy me early. America, are you learning now? 
You are receiving spiritual enlightenment so that when you say, I am more than a conqueror, it's not just a blind confession. What you mean is, I have surrounded myself with mysteries like chariots. I know how to win. When I stand before a door, I reach out to this spiritual bag that I have and draw forth the revelation that becomes a key. Are you learning now? Your children are not working. They are learning all kinds of things. And once you just sit down and say, well, this is America. I don't know what to do about my children. Let me tell you, you're going to produce some kind of children that will bring you pain. Go to the Bible. Prodigal sons returned home. But what was the father doing? I will tell you what the father was doing. He left home and started contributing to his son's returning. He did not wait till the son got home. You may not walk and look for your son, but you can begin to pray and intercede. That is like walking to meet your son. Are we together? You go to Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. The Bible says his seed shall be mighty. How do you turn that into prayer? In the name of Jesus, my seed, you are mighty. I'm raising obedient children, God-fearing, productive blessings to the nation. Are we together? He says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Then he says wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever. You turn that into prayer. Is someone learning now? The spirit of fear is plaguing you because you hear that they are downsizing people and you know you are behind on your mortgage. No, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? I'm training you to be more than a conqueror. You have to know the truth and engage the truth. Know the truth and engage the truth. Say that after me. Know the truth and engage the truth. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me. It's in the presence of my enemies. Anointing my head with oil, my cup runs over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is how it works in the kingdom. Halika parakosiata. That's how it works in the kingdom. Hmm. Though my beginning be small, don't laugh at me because I just came into America. My letter end shall greatly increase. There is a hand upon my life bringing favor. There is a hand upon my life raising destiny helpers. There is a hand upon my life guiding me. The Lord is my shepherd. He said I shall not he leads me. He leads me. I may look confused, but I'm still being led. He leads me. Look at me. And when some person wants to look at you somehow and make it look like you don't deserve to excel, unfortunately, the same Lord is rich unto all. God is no respecter of persons. No. You may not like my accent. You may not like the color of my skin. You may not like how I look. But it happens not because of my personality. It happens because of God's integrity. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is the mentality that we carry to America. This is the mentality we're taking to Canada. In September, this is the mentality. You would never do such a thing if you did not have this mentality. What guarantee do you have? What pride? What arrogance? You just leave Nigeria and jump into America and expect the nation to listen to you? Who do you think you are? Let me tell you, I am the son of the one who owns the earth. I am the son of the one who owns the earth. I am the son of the one who owns the earth. Hear that again. I am a child of the one who owns the earth. Oh dear, I am a child of the one who owns the earth. Listen, this should not produce pride, but it should produce confidence. 
walk the streets of America knowing that everybody met land when they came. Yeah. Only one person is called the creator of the ends of the earth. Do you know what that means? It means for everyone here, because God is a God of portions, if he sent you to the U.S., there is a portion for you. Find a way of believing this. Don't allow wrong spirits fool you into living a second class life. No. 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 I expect favor everywhere. Everywhere. Honestly. I do. I do. I do. The Bible says whatsoever he doeth prospers. It didn't say if he does it in America or if he does it in Nigeria. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. Because this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. Are we together? I believe I am a blessing. I cannot think of myself as a curse. Do you know why? Because Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3 says, In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. In thee, in thee, beloved, listen, in thee. In thee as a Ghanaian, help those under the anointing. In thee as an American, in thee as an African American, in thee as a European, in thee as a Native American, in thee everywhere. In thee, once you are a believer, you've been grafted into a new life. And the Bible says, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29, and if ye be Christ, then are you heirs according to the promise. No matter how humble I am, I will never accept defeat. Never. No, sir. Is someone getting angry? You have allowed many things to go wrong in your life, but it's time to grow. Apostle, but nobody wants to help me. They don't come, they are called. They don't just come, they are called. Did you hear that? They don't just come, learn this. They are called, they are called. Even God who quickened the dead and called those things, called those opportunities, called those helpers. They are called by the Spirit. They are called in the place of prayer. Listen, please listen. I hope you... I shared a scripture that I want to share with you now. Numbers chapter 1 and verse 5. I found the scripture and it blessed me. I came to challenge you. Stop giving excuses. The grace of God is upon you. It's time to walk as more than a conqueror. I'd like you to shout this scripture as loud as you can see it when I prompt you. Ready? One, two, go. One more time. One more time. So there are men who have been ordained to stand with you. How come you've been doing business alone? How come you've been doing ministry alone? How come you've been moving around America alone? Do you know how to call them? These are the names. They have names. They are living people. Dear businessman, hear me. There are people ordained to stand with you. Man of God, there are men and women across the entire America, across the globe to stand with you. Stand with you financially. To stand with you by encouraging you. To stand with you in prayer. Whether you enjoy their ministry or not, just know this for a fact, that there are men anointed by God. To stand with you means to stand for you. To stand with you means to stand with your children. To stand with you means to stand with your business. Yes, sir. Dave, get a team for me. Let's sing a bit.
Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. I'm going to teach you how to pray in America. We pray. Prayer that produces results. I don't downplay your spiritual experience. I know that you are a people who love Jesus. But let grace be added to grace. Every door that has refused to open, it's time to be angry in the spirit. A holy provocation. I don't know who I'm speaking to. I'm speaking to a sister. I'm speaking to a brother. I'm speaking to a man of God who is frustrated. We see not our signs. <laughs> it's time. Now hear me. Ezekiel chapter 37 describes a very sorry situation. The prophet was taken in the spirit on the Lord's day and he arrived a place in the spirit and the Bible says he saw bones. They were once an army. God does not create bones. He creates men. But they deteriorate until all that is left are bones. Bones are a testimony that losses have happened. Bones are a testimony that decay, depletion, decline has happened. And he says, son of man, can these bones, is there a mystery in the economy of God where bones can find life, can find flesh? Is somebody learning now? And the prophet, now listen, I hope you know that prophets were not naive people. A prophet like Ezekiel was accustomed to spiritual things. He was a custodian of a measure of mysteries in the spirit. There are few things that take prophets unawares. No, they were already open to spiritual things. But seeing that situation, here's how he replied, only thou knowest. I, I cannot, even with my experience in the prophetic, with respect to this level of death, decay, decadence, decline. Hmm. And he said, let me teach you how to be more than a conqueror. Lesson one, every time you see things in the physical and you see them deteriorated, understand that the realm of the spirit births the physical and that there is something you can do with God in the spirit that can begin to manipulate realities. That when a job is not working, stop quarreling your colleagues, go to the realm of the spirit. That is the control room. Destiny is controlled from the realm of the spirit. Is someone learning now? Favor is controlled from the realm of the spirit. Promotion controlled from the realm of the spirit. That's how it works. And he said, son of man, here's the formula, prophesy. Speak to the bones. Don't mind what you are saying while you speak. While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. America, for the things that are seen are temporal. Someone prophesied, temporal. One more time. Temporal. Yes, sir. It means subject to change under a certain condition. Not every condition. Under a certain condition. Listen, science has perfected the art of simulating conditions that produce certain outcomes. So you can bring butter out of milk, not under every condition. A scientist is one who has mastered through study, through research and development. Are we together? A set of conditions that can be simulated. Science has so advanced that they can simulate weather conditions over territories. You need to be a spiritual rainmaker that you know how to program your climate. If life is not working, you don't argue like an unbeliever. This is the value of enlightenment. You know 
that I can control outcomes. I have been given dominion. I am more than a conqueror. I have the life of God. But there are laws, there are mysteries that control results. And you find by the spirit what mystery is responsible for what. We want to engage one of those mysteries now. It's called the mystery of creation. The mystery of resurrection. The mystery of restoration. There is a mystery that can make dead things to come back to life. Prophesy. And he said, I prophesied as I was commanded. And there was a sound. A sound, a sound over my job. Finally, after five years, I'm hearing a sound. Been barren for 10 years, I'm hearing a sound. A sound means something is arriving. A sound means something is arriving. It's a vehicle is coming closer to you. You hear a sound before you even see the vehicle. A sound means something has left heaven coming to you, coming to you. Go ahead and pray in the spirit for one minute. 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 We are more than conquerors. Will be your song of rejoicing it will be your triumphant entry let me have your attention Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 10 blessed be the name of the Lord Ezekiel 37 and verse 10 so I prophesied as I was commanded the next verse and breath entered into them and they lived and it lived the Bible says and they stood up upon their feet and they were no longer called bones they were called an exceeding great army I know I was once called a failure but verify before you still call me a failure, 
Because whilst you are calling me a failure, breath is coming into me. Life is coming into me. Don't call an army bones. It is true there were once bones. Don't call Abram, Abram indefinitely. Names can change. Status can change. And in this place right now, please listen carefully. I believe there are many believers. You came as an ordinary believer. Perhaps just barely saved. But something has been happening to you. It's, it's a programming in the spirit. Are we together? And before you sit down, I want to reveal, help those under the anointing, a new status by reason of the things you're hearing. I want to announce to you what I see about you in the spirit. Can I announce that to you? Because for many of you, you came bearing all kinds of names. Some Ichabod, that the glory has departed. Some you came bearing names of failure, defeat, depression, but haven't taught you this by the Spirit. I have a new name for you. Are you ready to hear that new name? See the army of the Lord. See the army of the Lord. See the army of the Lord. One more time. Help me, Dave. Marching in the name of Jehovah, Jehovah. See the army of the Lord marching in the name of Jehovah, Jehovah. That's your name now. See the army of the Lord marching in the name of Jehovah. You are no longer the weak believer. of Jehovah, Jehovah, where the army, where the army of the Lord, marching in the name of Jehovah, you're marching to every system, you're marching to the banking sector, you are marching to politics, you're marching everywhere by the power of the Holy Ghost, you're not an ordinary believer again. Revelation has brought that transition in the spirit. Are you ready to celebrate your new status by the spirit? of sicknesses walls of financial limitations someone prophesy to yourself see the army of the Lord marching in the name of Jehovah Jehovah and the army I'm marching in the name of Jehovah come on rise up army of the Lord see the army Breathe, Lord. 
I manifest it's your testimony, your power, and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. Ay, 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 a mighty army. I'm the army of the Lord, marching in the name of Jehovah. And there stood an exceeding great army. An exceeding great army. Regardless your background, an exceeding great army regardless your failures of yesterday an exceeding great regardless your current financial situation an exceeding listen this will be our last contact before we leave America to Canada if you've forgotten everything I said today do not forget this when the prophet got to the vision, they were bones. But at the end of that experience, the new status, the new name was an exceeding great. So the Bible says, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? And he lists the various things that can turn men to bones. Persecution, hunger, famine, rejection, pain, joblessness for 10 years, barrenness for 20 years, all these and more can reduce men to be less of themselves. But when you get to that wilderness, don't focus on the bone, focus on the sound. Because with every sound, like you have heard many sounds through my teachings, there's been a transition. We're going to sing that song one time then we will pray. We'll pray in the spirit for a few minutes. I will impart grace upon you and we're done. And Koinonia Global, Abuja, Zaria, UK, Canada, I want your heart to be open. This is not entertainment. This is prophecy. Something is resting upon you. For some of you, as you shouted that, I see the army of the Lord and where that army, for the first time it will occur to you, that I am not a non-entity. For the first time it will occur to you that though my beginning be small, my latter end will greatly increase. That even though men have laughed over you, you can say rejoice not over me, my enemies. It may be true that I've fallen a thousand times, but I will rise because there is hope for a tree. Even if it be cut off, it says at the scent of water. Are you ready to prophesy? Hold the hands of someone if you can. And we're going to sing this song one more time as a family of faith. That we are the army. See the army of the Lord. Marching in the name of Jehovah. And then we are the army of the Lord. Marching in the name of Jehovah. See yourself matching everything that has mocked God over your life. See the walls of shame and reproach tearing down. Imagine yourself as that victorious army marching around Jericho. Only that you are not moving around physically. But in your mind and in the spirit. See yourself going around every Jericho. And for the next one minute see Jericho going down going down Jericho of shame Jericho of reproach in the name of Jesus are you ready now Dave lead us and then we'll begin to pray oh see the army of the Lord marching in the name of Jehovah Jehovah where the army where the army of the Lord marching in Yeah. 
want you to begin to make prophetic decrees over your destiny. In the name of Jesus, I make progress. Someone open your mouth and begin to pray. I decree and declare that by God, I run through a troop. By my God, I leap over walls. Someone declare, declare by the Spirit. The Bible says, declare ye that thou mightest be justified. Go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus, I am part of God's army. Anointed, ordained with power, ordained with grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, pray in the Spirit. Someone make declarations of faith. Reprogram your possibilities in the Spirit. America, pray. America, pray. Abuja, pray. I believe the word of God. My life produces results. I bear fruit in the name of Jesus. I bear fruit by the power of the Holy Spirit. Manifesting unquestionable dominion. Manifesting unquestionable dominion. By the Spirit. By the Spirit. By the Spirit. Someone pray. Not by power. Not by might. But by my Spirit. But by my Spirit. Elevated by the Spirit, anointed by the Spirit, making progress by the Spirit. Keep praying. We the army of the Lord, marching in the name of Jehovah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, one final prayer and I'm going to speak over your life. The Bible says, ye have not because ye ask not. America, from the start of this conference, you have seen a manifestation of several graces that control the possibilities that you have seen through this conference and even today. And every gift and grace of God is for the taking for those who have the discernment and the desire. You are going to pray that the graces that are yet deficient in your life, causing your Christian experience to not reveal the fullness of Christ, you're going to place a demand by faith. Is it the absence of favor? You're going to pray. Is it the absence of man that you do not have helpers in your life? Is it laziness spiritually? You found out that you're not able to pray. You don't have passion for the word of God. Could it be that you're someone who does not find it easy to believe God? You are, you're full of your, you know, you can doubt everything and that malleability to believe God. There's no point being condemned, but we're going to pray. That area of concern, the area in need of a higher investment of God's grace. For someone, maybe it's your finances. Perhaps you are a man of God here and you are trusting God for increase of all and every kind. I give you the next one or two minutes. Let's pray as a family of faith, crying unto the God of all grace. The God of all grace. Release afresh upon my life the spirit of wisdom. Release afresh upon my life this grace called favor, someone pray, release upon my life the grace for speed. All that it takes to be a manifestation of the glory of God, I receive by faith. Someone is praying. I am more than a conqueror. A more than a conqueror, more than a conqueror, 
by the power of the Holy Ghost. I am more than a conqueror in the name of Jesus. No limitations in my life, no limitations in my business. I access the requisite wisdom to rise, the requisite wisdom to thrive. I enjoy the gift of man in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of prayer and supplication, the grace to travail until victory is birthed. I receive fresh passion for the word of God. A believer is praying. Go ahead and pray. A believer is praying. A determined believer is praying. A determined believer is praying. A determined believer is praying. Hungry for a new dimension. Hungry for a new experience. Hungry for a new season. A new season in the spirit. A new season in destiny. A new season of your health, your finances, your children, your relationships, your career. Hallelujah. 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 Please lend me your attention now. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is the way he engraces men. You see, you cannot produce God's results in the strength of the flesh. He says, tarry ye in Jerusalem until I taught you, I mentored you, but it's still not enough to make you a witness. Tarry until ye be endued with power from on high. Are we together? Power from on high. Prosperity takes power. It takes power to make progress. It takes power to lead a ministry that excels. It takes power to build a business that lasts. Hmm. Power. And that is what you need. That is what you are about to receive. Now listen please. The Bible teaches two dimensions of the anointing. Number one, the anointing within. Number two, the anointing upon. The anointing within is an engracing of the Holy Spirit upon every believer that allows you to align with the dealings of God. The purpose of the anointing within is to teach you all things and to produce transformation. The anointing within does not produce empowerment for service. It does the inner work. Are we together? It is on account of that anointing that you can have the zeal to pray, the zeal to love God. That working of the spirit within you is by the anointing within. But then there is the anointing upon. The anointing upon. That is an empowerment for service. It brings validation to your witness. No witness is effective until you have evidence. And the assignment of the anointing is to bring credence to the speakings of God over your life. To bring credence to your claims so that you do not look like a liar under God. Because God is not a man that you should lie. Nor the son of man that you should repent. Are we together? And there are three ways you may care to learn. Three ways by which we receive the anointing. Number one we can receive the anointing directly from God through encounters. We see that in the life of Solomon. He had an encounter with God and directly he received the anointing. Number two, we receive the anointing on account of our interacting with scripture. Habakkuk chapter 3, 3 and 4. The Bible says there were rays that came out from his hand and there within that sun-like splendor was the hiding place of his power. The word of God is hidden in his light. When you access light, you also access power. But number three, the third way we receive impartations or we receive the anointing is through the mystery of impartation. Impartation is beyond oil. Impartation is a transference of graces, a transference of spiritual possibilities from those who have received it by mercy to those who need it truthfully. Those who have received it by mercy to those who need it. Now you be sensitive over what happens here. Those who have received it by mercy. Because Paul says that we are custodians of the mystery. A custodian is a caretaker. You have been given certain graces in trust. 
to be a distribution channel to those who need it for their spiritual excellence and then for your own profiting. So Paul says, ye are all partakers of my grace. I didn't just come to you this afternoon with good teaching. I also came bearing gifts. 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 Gifts that redefine your spiritual possibilities. And I want to impart these graces upon you. You've heard some of them. Ladies and gentlemen, Koinonia US, listen to me. There are, when God calls a man, when God calls a people, there are graces that are invested within those individuals. And you will only be able to replicate the results when you understand the truths that build their thoughts and convictions and then you have access to the graces upon which they stand. You have heard the truth. I have given you a manifesto, a rundown of the spiritual information that produce dominion that makes one to be more than a conqueror indeed. The strength of your spiritual understanding enhanced by your diligence, understanding the laws of the spirit and how to engage them appropriately. Now it's time for you to receive this grace. And I'm praying for you from the depth of my heart that as I minister, receive it. You've seen this grace. Listen, you, you've seen a display of these graces. When you receive the truth and you receive the grace, then you are ready to be a witness indeed. Father, I pray over Koinonia USA, over Koinonia Global, over the many who are here in this auditorium and those who are outside of this place, that every impartation they're about to receive, Lord, let it speak in their lives. I stretch my hands and I pray the grace that produces hunger, hunger for spiritual things, hunger for prayer, hunger for the things of the spirit. I impart that grace upon you now. I impart that grace upon you now. I impart that grace upon you now. In the name of Jesus. Someone is about to receive a baptism of the spirit of wisdom. I decree and declare. I don't know how many people are in need of it. My God, help those under the anointing. Take that fire now. 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 The spirit of wisdom. Go and excel. Go and excel. Please, whether you are an usher or not, if someone is under the anointing close to you, just help guide them. I release that spirit, that grace, wisdom, extraordinary wisdom. Go and produce results, marvelous results, results in ministry, results in business, results in career, results in your relationships, results in your finances. In the name of Jesus. Someone here needs favor. The anointing that came upon Esther that distinguished her out of the many virgins until she found favor with Ahasuerus in the name of Jesus, the giver of all gifts and the giver of all good things. I stretch my hands prophetically. Koinonia USA, receive this grace called favor. Receive this grace called favor. Receive this grace called favor. Let it speak in the morning. Let it speak in the afternoon. Let it speak in the night. I say again, let it speak in the morning. Let it speak in the afternoon. Let it speak in the night. In the name of Jesus. By this impartation, access the gift of man. Access strategic helpers. Access the gift of men. Access strategic helpers. Access the gift of men. Access strategic helpers. In the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. There is a power to prosper. We had a time with the workers yesterday and I taught them a bit and I need to release that grace upon you. The power to prosper has nothing to do with finances, even though finances answer to it. The power to prosper is the grace that sponsors advancement. You never make progress if you do not have the power to prosper. Most times people narrow it down to finances because the Bible says the power to get wealth. Wealth is not money. Wealth is beyond money. In fact, if all you have is money, you are rich but you are not wealthy. Hallelujah. The power to prosper. The grace that can help men run through a troop. The grace that can help men leap over a wall. Knocking off every limitation and forcing progress. Who is ready to receive? In the name that is above all names. It doesn't matter if you just arrived America or you've been in America for some time and it looks like doors are not opening, you are not making progress. Here comes the grace that lifts you. Here comes the grace that pushes you forward. Receive the power to prosper. Receive the power to prosper financially. The power to prosper relationally. The power to prosper professionally. In the name of Jesus. By this impartation, I command mysterious doors. Help that lady. Mysterious doors be open. Mysterious doors be open. Mysterious doors be open. Miraculous doors be open. Strategic doors be open. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be distracted. Something is coming upon your head. Something is coming upon your head. Hallelujah. Now please listen. Please listen. There is a grace I want you to receive. Not many people have received it because they do not know what it can do. It's the grace for humility. You see, let me tell you this. In the presence of pride, the anointing cannot help you. Because the anointing only fights what is against the will of God. Are we together? But the Bible says God himself opposes the proud. That means when you are proud, even an impartation cannot help you. Because the person against you is not a demon. Are we together? I have prayed over myself and I have seen the benefit of accessing the grace for true humility. Pride is a killer. It destroys good things. Pride is like adding decay to something glorious. I'm saying this because by reason of these impartations you are receiving, you will marvel and wonder at what begins to happen in your life. But you see, the tendency for all men, when you begin to produce extraordinary results in ministry, your finances, when the lines fall for you in pleasant places, chances are excellent that you will want to steal the show. And there comes pride. You must always remember that it is the Lord your God that giveth you the power and you must learn to intentionally hide behind the cross and project Jesus. As an anointed man of God, it is very easy to want to promote yourself while people acknowledge the hand of God upon your life. Chances are excellent you want to savour the moment. The world can do that. But you see, that is not the culture of the kingdom. You must learn to hide behind the cross Many years ago, the Lord said this to me, and many of you have heard me say it, that if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. I can tell you, my dear people, one secret of the grace of God upon my life is that I make it an intentional project, consciously, to check balance pride and hide behind the cross. Are we together? You don't reject the honor that comes on account of serving His Majesty. But when men begin to worship you as though everything that God has wrought through you were by your power and by your might, you must be wise enough to know that pride is a killer. When both God and Satan are fighting you, you are dead. Because who do you run to? Satan is ever ready to destroy you. Now you become an enemy of God through pride. Fight pride. Ask Lucifer. Fight pride. Ask Lucifer. Pride is a degrader. It brings people from their high estate, their place of honor and nobility and grace and reduces them. 
Can I remind you of a man called Nebuchadnezzar in the Bible? His pride and arrogance went like a pungent incense to the heavens. The result was that a noble king, the strongest of his time, became a beast for seven years. That is what pride can do. Are you ready to receive that grace? It is a signature grace in this ministry that when you see someone who is a true son and a daughter, you see someone who is part of this grace genuinely. If you see pride in their life, it's either they are not genuinely connected or they have not worked on it. It's a signature grace that God has given. We are a people who have been helped by God. And part of our assignment is to let the nations see the excellency of his grace through our lives. But then that they learn that a man can receive nothing except it is given unto him. By this impartation, every spirit of arrogance, pride, vain glory, in the name of Jesus, I cast it out of your life. I cast it out of your life. Out of your life, out of your life, I impart upon you the grace for true humility. That whilst God is doing marvelous things through your life, you will let the nations know that he is the doer. That you are just a partner in progress, not the reason for the result. May you never be ashamed to promote Jesus beyond yourself. I say to you again, may you never be ashamed to exalt and promote Jesus beyond yourself. Listen, find comfort when he is glorified above you. That's how it was to be. When you lift Jesus above yourself, you sponsor longevity of your stay. It means you will remain for a long time. Are we together? But when you find the position of God in your life through pride, you have cut short your honor. It leaves. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now let me prophesy over your life. Every door that has been closed over your destiny. Please hear me, my beloved people. In the name that is above all names, I speak to that door. I invoke the one who has the key of David, the one who opens a door that no man can shut and shuts doors that no man can open. I speak to every closed door, America, Koinonia, US. I declare over that door, Ephata be opened. Ephata be opened. Doors of increase be opened. Doors of opportunities be opened. Doors of liftings be open. Doors of honor be open. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now hear me. You must insist after today's meeting that someone will know Jesus because of your life. The business of introducing Jesus to the nations it's not just a church thing. It is the primary assignment of every witness. John chapter 1 and verse 6. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that through his witness, verse 7, all men might believe. This is why he prospers, that through your witness, all men might believe. This is why he moves you forward, that through your witness. This right there, John 1, 6 and 7, is the corporate mandate of every believer. Regardless the geography of your assignment, not everyone will be on the pulpit shouting like me. Not everyone will be singing like these precious people. Not everyone will be on the camera like my brother there. Not everyone will be mobilizing businesses across the continent. But everybody has something to do. And you must realize that our corporate mandate is that in spite and regardless your geography, in terms of your assignment and in terms of your location, have this understanding, have this orientation that I exist to bring him glory. Amen. And that means everything that brings him glory, including the salvation of sinners, including the transformation of immature believers, including the empowerment 
of believers that are transformed, including societal and territorial transformation, everything that is pro-kingdom, pro-Jesus, is your business. You must carry that mandate. You are koinonia extended. The places I cannot go, you go in the name of Jesus. That's why we sang that song. You are the army of the Lord. You are marching. So when you get to a station, make sure you do not fail the name of the Lord. And remember what I taught you? You are manifesting the fullness of Christ, the nature and the character of Jesus, the wisdom of the Spirit and the works of Christ. Mighty manifestations. When you see someone who is sick, don't join people in sympathy. Tell them, I've been given a renewed orientation. I am a believer, a life-giving spirit. You lay your hands on the person and say, in the name of Jesus. Don't just say the God of Joshua Selman. He's now your God. You lay hands like a believer who's been grafted into Christ and command that devil to give way. Are we together? Return back to your family. Dear mom, lay your hands on your children. You came from me. You will serve my God. No Babylonian system would draw my children to serve Satan. Is a mother ready to do that? You lay your hands on your children. You go back home as a father whilst your children are sleeping. You've heard me say that. Walk room to room, lay hands, pray in the spirit and declare over them, I am priest over this family and I command that this family must serve the Lord. Financial doors must open. Take your place. Be excellent and diligent as you serve. You are given a job, don't compromise, don't cut corners, don't bribe, you're a believer. Are we together? Walk with integrity. You may experience a temporary setback, but God is not a man that you should lie. You can be sure like Joseph that your season of appearing and your time of honor will surely come. Are we together? Become an extension of koinonia, but more importantly, become an extension of his name and his majesty. Do not forget this song. You are the army of the Lord. You are marching in the name of Jehovah. 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 Father, I want to make an altar call. We're wrapping up. There are several people here. Unfortunately, we do not have enough space to have anyone in front. But, all the same, we cannot end our meetings in America without giving someone an opportunity for every gathering of people this much there is always someone sent by God to make it right with Jesus. Perhaps you couldn't make the call during the conference or you were still undecided as at then. But now on hearing me speak, the Holy Spirit has convicted you and you're ready to make it right with Jesus. Because we're bankrupt of space, I'm not going to ask you to come out, but I'm going to ask you to lift your hands and you will do that to Jesus. So let me find people here who are saying, Apostle, please do not leave America without giving me an opportunity to make it right. That includes Abuja, the overflows everywhere, and all our expressions. The first, the first port of call on your journey to becoming more than a conqueror is that you have to be connected to the conqueror himself, Jesus. It is of his fullness we have received, even grace upon grace. Is someone lifting his hands? Let me see the hands of someone who wants to make Jesus. Please, ushers, counselors, can you search for the hands that are lifted? I see a beautiful sister there. Koinonia, give them a big God bless you. Let's have ushers all around. Please, if you are for the salvation prayer, just lift your hands and... Keep it lifted until you receive a card. I see a sister lifting her hands. There's someone, please give her. Don't be tired of clapping. Let's encourage them. Abuja, for those of you who want to make this decision from Abuja, I would ask you to move forward. Please move forward right to the front or to your LEDs, those who are following all the overflows. Please make your way to the front. Jesus wants to give you a new beginning. He's the basis for your becoming more than a conqueror, walking in the realm of unquestionable dominion. Now, just a moment. For those who have lifted their hands, before you fill your card, don't worry, you can feel that after the prayer. Let me encourage you. By the way, for those who are making this decision online, 
you would notice that there is a QR code. Do well to scan it and then fill the information. Let's know that you made Jesus Lord of your life. Doesn't matter the nation, doesn't matter the region. You can connect online. You should have a link there. And please follow or you have the QR code. Do well to um, scan it and then fill the information there. I want to lead those whose hands are lifted uh, to this salvation prayer. Please keep your hands lifted and say this after me. Say it from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. Say, Lord Jesus, I can't hear you, but I know that Jesus is able to hear you. This is particularly for those praying the sinner's prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I have heard your word. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From today and forever, I'm a child of God. I go from glory to glory, grace to grace. Amen. Keep your beautiful hands lifted. Father, thank you for these ones who have made these declarations of faith here on site and across the globe connected. In the name of Jesus, I release upon them the grace to advance, to make progress in the spirit. I pray that they will love you like never before. They will serve you like never before. They will learn your ways until they become mighty in the spirit. I confer the blessing of the Lord upon you. And I declare, be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. One last announcement and we're done. Please be seated. Thank you very much for your patience. We're about wrapping up service. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. I love you too. Hallelujah. Now, please lend me your attention. Canada, are you ready? Let's rejoice for Canada. Amen. So we leave after today to Canada. We're in Canada. Wednesday, Thursday is Sound of Revival Canada. And let me tell you something. In as much as God is moving everywhere, he has a unique agenda for U.S., but he also has a unique agenda for Canada. So he's not doing the same thing. Are we together now? All of you here and all who are in America, now the orientation we have in Koinonia is that everywhere we go, we go together as a family. We may not all go in the flesh, but we must go in the spirit. So Canada is still our business. You may not be there physically, but make sure you connect. And I'm told that we've been able to get... Um, the links open for more people, those who perhaps until now were not able to register. Let me lend my voice with the media and PR to encourage as many. You have loved ones who are around Toronto and its region, please go ahead. You have a few days, you can still secure the tickets. We've mandated that they open up all the spaces available so that um, we have as many people who want to be there. And then, as always, all our conferences across our social media live. So make sure that um, you who are here and your family members connect by faith. Thankfully, your time zones are similar. And um, Africa Connect 2 is going to be midnight for most of us, but discipline yourself. See it as a camp meeting. See it as a retreat. And then we'll connect by faith. We'll learn the ways of God and experience signs and wonders by His Spirit in the name of Jesus. And so we speak one more time over Canada that in the name of Jesus, there'll be massive salvation of souls. In the name of Jesus, there'll be healings, deliverances. The word of God will come with power. And in the name of Jesus, as we say it in this ministry, Jesus will be revealed and Jesus will be glorified. In the name of Jesus. America, thank you once again for receiving me. Thank you once again for receiving Koinonia. Thank you once again for submitting yourself to this apostleship to learn, to grow. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate my team from Nigeria. Can you give them a big God bless you? And by the way, by the way, we have a number of people who 
flew in from various parts of Nigeria. In fact, Abuja, and then those who flew in from across Africa. Thank you. Let's give them a big God bless you. And then those who flew in from across the United States, those who flew in, we have a team that flew in from the UK. Let's celebrate our UK family. Hallelujah. Amen. And like I promised the workers, um, I'm sure that God will help us. We will announce the next city there was um, in... Someone says DMV. No, 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 no. We, we will decide. We will decide. And so, now listen, please. Listen. So we usually would have the Sound of Revival. That's the biggest platform. You know, that's an apostolic crusade. Then we have um, the believers meeting, smaller, just like this. Come up here. Many of you followed the UK's edition. And then we have a retreat for the workers. So do well to connect. Connect to all our social media platforms. Abuja and then the US. The US has its own social media platform. And make sure you are part of this vision indeed. Um, look out for our various programs within the US and then global. Connect and keep learning. One assurance I can give you is that your life will never be the same. Hallelujah. So, you're going to help me do one last thing um, before we share the grace to end the service. Now, this concerns U.S., but all other expressions, you are able to do that if you have the strength. You're going to walk up to 10 or 20 people. Give them a big hug. Greet them. Tell them it was so good serving with you, so good listening to Jesus with you. Go ahead. If they don't hug you, hug them. If they don't greet you, greet them. Go ahead. Go ahead. Greet someone. Appreciate someone. Love on someone. We're now one big family. Someone. Number five. Number six. I'm doing the counting. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine. Someone is here to hug the first person. Abuja, are you following with that hug and greeting too? It applies to you. Thank you. You are from Mexico. Mexico. Do we have people from Mexico here? Mexico. Amazing. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, hold hands together. We have to close. Amen. 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 Dave, can you sing base, base favor? May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations. Your family and your children and their children, and their children. May His presence be for you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you. He is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing. He is for you, he is for you, he is for you, he is for you, for you, for you, he is for you, for you, yeah. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations. May sign to yourself. All around you, within you, I declare the blessing of the Lord upon you. In the name of Jesus, you leave this place a sign and a wonder. 
you leave this place experiencing unending testimonies. I call you an exceeding great army. I call you a sign and a wonder. I call you a transformed believer, an empowered believer. I call you a witness. In the name of Jesus, you are an extension of the sound of revival. Go and do much for the kingdom. Bring glory to the nations. And the name of Jesus. I'm praying because of you, we declare that America, the heritage of grace, of influence, of power, will never go down over America. And by the way, let me speak one last time over America. In the name of Jesus, because you have received us, America be blessed. We declare blessings from the White House to your parliament, to all who serve this nation. You are blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Together as a family of faith, let's share the grace in closing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.